Hi guys, welcome to this 14th tutorial in this series of programming PIC microcontroller with MPLAB XC8 compiler. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn the RS-232 serial communication. The RS-232 serial communication is one of the oldest communication where data is sent or received one bit at a time. This protocol can be easily be used to communicate between a PC and various devices supporting this type of protocol like PIC microcontrollers, GPS and GSM modules. This is the simplest way to communicate between a PIC microcontroller and a PC. There are main applications where a user is required to send some parameters to the microcontroller or for the microcontroller to send some data to the PC, let's say for long-term storage or for further data processing. While other interfaces like Ethernet and USB all send data serially, the term serial port usually identifies hardware more or less compliant to the RS-232 standard intended interface with modem or similar communication devices. These are a couple of few cables that maybe you are familiar with. This is a USB cable, this is an Ethernet cable, and this is the RS-232 serial cable that we're going to use in this tutorial. The Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter Controller is the key component of the serial communication between a device and a PC or between devices. The USART is also a common integrated feature in most microcontrollers today, which is useful for communicating serial data to your PC or to other devices or even to other microcontrollers. Most of these peak microcontrollers have an internal USART at the specific pins of the microcontrollers, like this 18F2620 peak microcontroller has got a built-in hardware USART module at pin RC6 which is used as a transmitter, and pin RC7, which is used as a receiver. This peak has got only one USART module, but other peak microcontrollers have more than one USART module. If for some reason you don't want to use the internal USART module, or if these pins have already been connected to other devices, this feature can also be implemented using any pin of the peak microcontroller, with software in most of the compilers, like the MPLAB XC8 compiler. If you are sending data between two microcontrollers, this is very easy. You don't need any special component between the microcontrollers. The transmitter of one microcontroller should be connected to the receiver of the other microcontroller, and the receiver of the other microcontroller should be connected to the transmitter on the other microcontroller. But if you are communicating between a microcontroller and a PC, you're going to need a voltage level converter because the microcontroller uses TTL level, which is 0 and 5 volt, while the PC uses the RS-232 standard protocol, which is different in terms of the voltage levels. The TTL of the peak microcontroller uses 0 for low and 5 for high. While the RS-232 voltage level standard is plus 3 to plus 15 volt for logic low and minus 3 to minus 15 for logic high. So you need a device to convert these voltage levels of plus minus 15 volt to 0 and 5 volt. The most commonly used device is the MAX-232. This is a simple connection of the MAX-32. Only three wires are used the transmitter, the receiver, and the ground wire. And these two wires are connected to the microcontroller. The T-in is connected to T-x of the microcontroller, and R1-out is connected to the R-x of the microcontroller. For serial communication, all the data transmission is handled by the USART module of the PIC microcontroller, but we have to configure this USART module before receiving and transmitting data. As we have learned in the analog to digital converter, XC8 compiler provides a hardware peripheral library that we can use to configure our peripheral modules. Let's go to that library and see how we can configure our USART module. This library 
is contained in the installation folder of your compiler. If you install your compiler in the C drive of your PC, under program files, look for microchip, then XC8, I'm using version 1.34, open the docs folder and open the MPLAB XC8 peripheral libraries. This is the PIC18F peripheral library help file. Let us search for the PIC we're gonna be using. Control F, PIC18F 2620. Enter. Click on your PIC. This is just a brief highlight of the peripheral of this PIC microcontroller. It says it can sync or source 25 milliamp current. It's got three external interrupt and so on. What is important in this? tutorial that it's got an RS-232 operating using internal oscillator block. No external crystal is required. To learn how to use this library, click here for the peripheral library support detail for this device. Click. This is the ADC library. We've got the output compare the I2C, the I2C prom. Let's scroll to USART. Okay, this is the USART library for this 2620 family. These are some few functions and micros that we're going to use. There is open USART. This is the function that is going to be used to configure a USART module. There is a write USART if you want to send a single character to the USART module. Port USART. The baud rate is a transmission speed that you're going to be using get usart put r usart and so on let us start with the first function click on open usart it says this function is gonna need to a configuration argument called config and an integer called spbrg which specifies the value to be written to the board rate generator register to determine the board rate so basically we're gonna have two Parameters. It says the parameters are passed to arguments or function as bit marks created by performing either bitwise end operation or bitwise OR operations. For these devices, in the config parameter, the first thing we're gonna need to configure the interrupt on transmission. You could set the transmission interrupt to be on or to be off. You could set the interrupt to be on or to be off. In the usart mode, you could set other asynchronous mode or synchronous mode the transmission width you could use other 8 bit or 9 bit and if you selected the synchronous mode you could select either it is synchronous slave or the synchronous master the reception mode you can set either a single reception or a continuous reception the board rate could set either high or low and you could set the address detect enable bit on or off the SPBRG, this is a value that is written to the board rate generator register which determines the board rate at which the USART operates. This is the formula for asynchronous mode high speed. FO is an oscillator frequency divided by 16 times SPBRG plus 1. If you are using the asynchronous mode low speed, this is the formula to determine the SPBRG. And if you are using the synchronous mode, this is the formula that you could use. Let's go to MPLAB XC8 and see how we can use this function, the open usart. Give set a simple example using 8 MHz crystal oscillator. The board rate you're gonna be using high speed asynchronous mode is used with 9600 board rate, and we're gonna use 8 data bit. The formula to calculate the SPBRG, we said is the oscillator frequency divided by 16 times SPBRG plus 1. This is basically the same if we are looking for SPBRG. It's going to be the oscillator frequency, which is 8 MHz, divided by 16 times 9600, which is going to be our board rate, minus 1. It's going to give us about 52 so this 52 is the integer value that we're gonna use in the spbrg argument open usart we're gonna set our interrupt off on transmit and off on receive we're gonna use the asynchronous mode we're gonna use 8 bit the reception mode 
it's gonna be continuous reception the baud rate is gonna be high baud rate and address detect enable we're gonna set it off then the second argument is gonna be our sp prg which is gonna be 52 if you are intending to use a different baud rate then this value is gonna change accordingly let's learn about some other few functions these are some few functions that we can use. The busy usart is used to check if the usart transmitter buffer is busy. You should always check for sending any new byte to the usart. The close usart is used to disable the usart module. The data ready usart. This function returns a 1 if the data is available in the usart buffer and a 0. It indicates that the data is not available. The get c usart. It's the same as read usart. This function reads a byte or one character from the usart buffer. If you want to read a single character from the usart, you could use this function. Get C usart or read usart. The get usart, this function reads a string of character from the usart. This function wait and read a specified number of characters. So you have to specify how many characters it should wait for. There is no time out and the program will wait forever if the specified number of characters are not received. If you say get to start buffer and specify 10, then this function is going to wait until it receives 10 characters. Put C usart is the same as write usart. This function sends a byte or one character to the usart. If you want to send one character, you should use the write usart. The put usart is used to send a string of characters to the data memory. If you want to send a string like hello world, you could use the put usart. And the put r usart is used to send a string of characters to the program memory. All these functions and many more I defined in this library help file. You could scroll through it and read more about all these functions. Let's go to our project again. We're gonna write a simple program to control our PIC microcontroller from a PC. If we send a 1 from the PC, it's going to switch on the, the red LED. And if we send 2, it's going to switch on the yellow LED. And if we send a 3, it's going to switch on the green LED. This is our XC8 code. As by now you know already, we've created a C file named config to set our configuration bit. Then in our main files, in our main C file, we included our configuration bit. And these two include the CAM by default, they are very important. We included our USART library. We set our port B as output B because we connected our LEDs on port B. We configured our register to the internal oscillator. We did not use any external oscillator. We used the built-in oscillator. Then we create one character variable data. We created another two characters to send some few messages to the PC. When we start our program, it's going to send to the PC. Welcome to studentcompanion.co.za. After 500 milliseconds on a second line, it's going to write press 1 for red LED, 2 for yellow LED, and 3 for green LED. This is the open USART, as we have explained it before. Then after configuring our USART module, we're going to send the first message, which is going to be welcome to studentcompanion.co.za. Before we do anything, we'll have to make sure that the USART is not busy. Then after 500 milliseconds, we're going to send another message, which is going to read press 1 for red LED, 2 for yellow, and 3 for green LED. But before we do that again, we'll have to make sure that the USART is not busy. Then basically after 500 milliseconds, we're going to start our infinite loop waiting for the command from the PC. Any command that we receive, we're going to store it in our variable data. We're going to say data read usart. We're going to read anything is from usart. If we receive a one, then we're going to switch on the first LED, which is connected to B0. The rest of the LED should be switched off. But if we receive the two, then we're going to switch on the yellow LED on B1 and the rest off. 
And if you receive three, then we're gonna switch on the green LED on B2 and switch off the rest of the LEDs. And the default, if there is nothing, then everything should be switched off. And this is all guys. Let us build our project. Build. Build successful. Let's go to our simulation. Basically, we're not going to connect this section because we are not connecting to a real hardware. We're going to use the simulation, the Proteus simulation. That's why I left this two pin open. But if you're using the real hardware, then this is basically how you should connect your PIC microcontroller to your PC. We've got our three LEDs connected to port B. This is a virtual serial terminal. You could get it under the virtual instrument and click on virtual terminal. The transmitter of the virtual terminal should be connected on the RX, the receiver of the microcontroller. And the receiver should be connected to the transmitter of the microcontroller. You have to make sure that the board rate of your microcontroller it's running on should be exactly the same board rate of your virtual terminal. To do that, right click the virtual terminal, edit property and set correctly your board rate. We've used 9600, the data bit is going to be 8, the parity is none and the stop bit is 1. Let's load our program. Usart.x Okay Let us run It says welcome to studentcompanion.co.z day And on the second line it says press 1 for red LED, 2 for yellow LED and 3 for green LED Okay, I'm gonna use Microsoft Virtual Keypad So that I can enter the value to send to the microcontroller this is the virtual keyboard. If I press one, you're gonna see the red LED is switch on. If I press two, the yellow is on. If I press three, then the green LED is on. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.